It's 2025, and you should probably know how to use the dark web. The dark web isn't some mysterious, scary thing. It's actually a really useful tool, especially in the age of the internet today, with our data being thrown everywhere, sold to the highest bidder, and anyone can see almost all of your information if you aren't careful. If you don't want to watch the whole video, all you really need to do is download Tor from the torproject.org, go to a site like Onion Link Hub to get a .onion link, and put it into Tor, and boom, you are now using the dark web. But there's a lot of nuance here to understand, especially around these privacy and security tools, to really know why they are built the way they are and why using them is actually important and useful. So let's first talk about this concept of the dark web. You've probably seen the dark web compared to an iceberg, and it's still a good comparison, so we'll use that here. Where at the top of the iceberg, you have your surface web, your clear net. This is anything on the internet that if you have a link, you can access and you can share that link with anyone else. Then you have the deep web. This would be things on the internet that maybe need some sort of special access to get to, like a username and password. This would be things like your own email, right? It is hidden because not anyone with a link should be able to get to your email. You need your username and password to get into your email. And then at the bottom of the iceberg, you have the dark web. And the term dark web makes it seem mysterious and scary, but really it's just a part of the internet where you need special tools to access. So you don't need a username and password per se, but you can't use normal internet browsers. You need to use special protocols to access this part of the internet. So we know what the dark web is as a concept, but why does the dark web actually even exist? Well, the dark web isn't some scary or mysterious thing. It was created as a security protocol for the military by DARPA back in the early 2000s. And the Tor project was founded to further develop it, and they went nonprofit and now continue to develop it today. So when you hear about the dark web, you're really hearing about the Tor network, uh, which the Tor project creates using their Tor proxy tool and the Tor browser. When you hear about Tor, most people often associate it with the Tor browser, but really the dark web itself and the Tor network is run via the Tor proxy. The Tor proxy works similar to how you might think a VPN works. It essentially just routes your traffic through a bunch of nodes on the internet before getting to your destination. So your destination that you're going to doesn't actually know who you are. They can't see your IP address. They can't see information about where you're coming from, hopefully. And that's what makes it more anonymous and private. The Tor proxy's strength is in the three hop system. So a minimum of three hops between you and your destination helps ensure privacy and security. And these hops have different layers of encryption, each hop unencrypting one layer and then sending it to the next hop. And these layers are why it's called onion routing or the onion protocol. And this is why Tor is known as the onion router. And this is where the dark web spawns from. It's not using the Tor proxy. That's not really the dark web. The dark web are websites that actually use the Tor proxy to serve their web content. So they're sitting on the other end serving you content and you can't actually know them either. You can't know where their IP address is or where they're located because it's also going through the Tor proxy. And this is the power of Tor and this is where the dark web exists. So now we know at a high level what Tor is, what onion routing is, and why darknet websites exist, but now we need to try to get access to them. Well, any services that run on the Tor network will create what's called a dot .onion address. This is like a dot .com, a dot .net, a dot .org, but a dot .onion address is a more anonymous string of characters and numbers that represents the service. And the Tor project will keep a list of all of these services and help route that traffic to the service and back to you by just going to that .onion address. So the first thing we need to do is actually download Tor. And we'll hop on our Windows desktop first to actually show you the process of downloading Tor. And here on our Windows desktop, you can open up your favorite browser of choice. In this case, we'll use Firefox. And once Firefox opens, we'll want to go to the torproject.org. And the torproject.org makes it super simple. They have a giant download button on their main page. We'll click that button. 
We're on Windows, so we'll want to download for Windows, but if you're on a different operating system, you can do that. And if you have an Android mobile device, you can actually download a version of Tor for that. It's the APK is available here, or it's on the Google Play Store. If you're on iOS, you are out of luck. Tor does not officially support iOS. There are some options in the documentation if you're interested, but we'll download on Windows. Now we've already downloaded this before, so we'll just cancel that and I'll show you the download is completed. Once it is downloaded by default, it does put it on your desktop in a folder called the Tor browser. And when you first launch Tor, you're going to see something. You're going to see a screen here that says connect to Tor. The most easy way to connect to Tor is just by clicking this giant connect button. Just be aware of your local law here. If you're not able to connect to Tor, it's likely blocked because it's illegal to access. So double check your local law to make sure you're allowed to access Tor before you do this. But you can go ahead and click connect. And once connected, you now have a circuit connected to Tor and we can actually start doing things with Tor. Now, this is the Tor browser and the Tor proxy. Remember, we're not necessarily accessing a darknet site, so we could do normal things like Google. Say we wanted cat pictures. We can search that in here. By default, the search engine is DuckDuckGo on Tor. And here we can find some cat pictures and videos. It's important to note that Tor is pretty slow. So watching things like videos or downloading things is going to be a little slower, but you are more anonymous and we can validate how anonymous we are by checking this button here in the top left search bar, and it'll actually show the Tor circuit for this site. You can see that we have three different hops. As we discussed earlier, we're going through Canada first. That's our entry guard. We're going through Germany second, and then we're coming out of the Netherlands. So three different steps. Say we wanted to change this though, we actually have a button here for a new identity. This will completely restart Tor, or we can click here and we can select new Tor circuit for this site. This will likely keep the same first hop. So if you want to completely change all three hops, you want to do that new identity button. But for now, we'll click this. And now you can see we actually did change our first hop. We're now going through Germany, then the US, and then Poland. And it actually just changed again. It reloaded. We're going through Germany, then Germany again, then out from Russia to DuckDuckGo. And you can use the Tor browser for normal internet browsing. It's a more secure and anonymous way of using the internet. And it's super useful for a lot of reasons. Some people might question why you would use something like this, but there are valid reasons for everything. Maybe you don't want your ISP seeing the data you're doing. Maybe you don't want people seeing your browser history. Maybe when you go to websites, you don't want them seeing information about your IP address, where you're coming from, and information about the browser. There's a lot of different things you can do. To make yourself even more safe, Tor has some built-in safety levels. If you look over here at the shield icon, right now we're on the standard level. If we go into the settings, we can select the level we want, each level coming with more and more security features. The safest is obviously the best, but a lot of websites will break if you use the safest setting. A lot of modern websites rely on things like JavaScript, and if when it's completely disabled, it'll be very difficult for some sites to load, and some will just completely not load at all. But if you're just doing normal browsing or anything like that, use the safest option. But now the question is how we get to the dark web. And luckily, we have a very good site for you to use called Onion Link Hub. Onion Link Hub is a source for all the .onion sites you might need. We take the most reputable, most popular sites available, and you can actually access this over Tor to our Onion site as well right here. But for now, we'll just check on the Onion Links page and we'll look for search engines in the search engine category. And my favorite search engine for the dark web is EMEA because it does strip out a lot of the more illegal and dangerous content. So you can just click on that link there. You will get a warning saying you are leaving Onion Link Hub, but that's no problem. And now you have made it to EMEA. You can search for really anything. Uh, you can start finding sites on the dark web. This is where we add a disclaimer that you should be very careful on the dark web, just clicking around on random links. While it's not necessarily more dangerous than the regular internet, some illegal and dangerous content is more readily available. So be very careful when browsing around. If you're interested in learning how to use the dark web more securely, if you're interested in tools like Tails OS, which is a secure operating system to better hide your footprint, learning about encryption, privacy, security, cryptocurrency, dark web marketplaces, dark web open source intelligence, and more, definitely check out Dark Web Academy. Be sure to use code YouTube for 20% off that membership and be sure to like and subscribe as we'll continue to produce content throughout this year related to the dark web, privacy, security, Tor, Tails, the dark web, Python and hacking, and more. Stay safe out there.